for the first shot. Let's get me putting this $20 into the donation plate. They'll love that on Humble Pie. I'll get a ton of up slices. Uh, how's the lighting in here? Give me a little more key. Which one? I look the most humble in that one. Post it to the humble feed. Done. What are you guys doing? We're taking pictures of each other for humble pie. Ooh, I think I've been to that website. Yeah, you post photos of people performing humble acts and everyone rates how humble they think it is by giving out up slices or down slices. And then you get a prize? No, you just get the privilege of knowing you have the most up slices. But I thought people weren't supposed to know they were being photographed. Technically, Gabe and I just happened to have camera phones handy when we were performing our numerous humble acts. It's all very spontaneous. Here, get one of me praying at the altar. No, from my left. That's my humble side. People are going to flip when they see this in the humble feed. Yeah, they will. Won't Humble Pie see that all your photos are coming from the same two users and shut you down? Aw, oh, she's right. We better make fake accounts to throw off any suspicion. Millions of fake accounts! All right, we've got 1.6 million fake accounts generated between the two of us. Great, and I've photodoctored us into various humble events. Here's you at a canned food drive. Here's you at the clean water event. Here's you at the animal shelter. <laughs> I've got thousands of these. What are we waiting for? Let's post them to the humble feed. Whew. We did it. We're the most humble. Hi, guys. Guess what? I joined Humble Pie, too. Great. Now you can upslice our photos. I know. I upsliced this photo of you and the bishop at a pancake feed, Ruby. And this one of you protecting endangered polar bears at the Arctic, Gabe. But those are just two. We have thousands of posts on there. Literally, hundreds of thousands. That's a lot. I only have one post, but it has a lot of upslices. 1.7 billion upslices? None of our posts are anywhere near that. Yeah, Humble Pie said it was a record or something. Ooh, I should show Monty. He has no idea he's on here. All of our altered photos. Our fake accounts. The user base must have seen right through us. And so that is why the term cold fusion is a bit misleading. Sure. But my question is if the quantum physics of, ooh, the church newsletter. It's just the same newsletter that comes out every month, Mimi. No way. Pastor Pete works so hard on every one of these. Let's see. Uh-huh. 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 <gasps> what? Oh, no. This is a disaster. What? What is it? It's Camp Sappy Pines. It's gone! Don't be ridiculous. It's a beautiful 103-acre Bible camp that generation after generation of young campers have enjoyed. It can't be gone. Yep, says so right here. Last summer was the end for Camp Sappy Pines. Say it isn't so. I had the best time there last summer, studying the plants and bugs and rocks. Oh, the rocks! I didn't even get a chance to go last year. I went to basketball camp instead. How was that, by the way? I'm open, right here. Cast me the rock. I've got a clear. Bravo. It was fine, but it was no Camp Sappy Pines. Camp Sappy Pines was the best. I thought I'd have more summers to enjoy it. It says that it was closed due to low enrollment. Yep, it says it was one kid short. Hey, Gabe, you're one kid. Oh, no. It is actually measurably my fault. Oh, yeah. I knew they were struggling last summer, which is why I signed up twice. One says Mimi, and one says May May, my pretend twin sister. Hi, Mimi. Hi, I'm Mimi. Hi, May May. I'm actually Mimi in disguise. Oh, um, I mean, hi, I'm May May. Wait, May May was you? Yeah, I'm pretty.
pretty great at disguises. We have to do something. We can't just let Camp Sappy Pines end. Let's get out there and raise some money to save our camp. Car wash, get your car washed to help save Camp Sappy Pines. <gasps> Ow. Brownies, get your bake sale brownies. Well, we failed. We never fail at something we put our minds to. Or do you guys sometimes fail when I'm not around? This is the end for Camp Sappy Pines. What are we going to do next summer? What else can we do? Hey, look! It says here that the church is starting a new family mission program next year. That's not a camp. That's something completely different. And new. And different. But how would we feel if we ended up doing this family mission trip every summer, and it totally changes our lives, and we look back years later and realize it all happened because Camp Sappy Pines closed? Let's do it! Okay! I'll go tell May May! Welcome to the final round of the 12th Annual Regional Sunday School Bible Quiz Bowl Championship! On the red team, representing First Second Church, are Roby, Mimi, and Leo. And representing Second First Church, the green team, featuring Sapphire, Yuyu, and Taurus. The Sunday school across town. They're renowned for their biblical knowledge. And I heard Taurus is the best softball, football, rugby, and lacrosse player this town has ever seen. What does that have to do with anything, Leo? I'm just saying, the green team brings a lot to the table. Going into our matchup, the red team leads the green team by two points. The category, Pontius Pilate questions Jesus. Here we go, team. Ready? Ready? Spaghetti! I mean ready. <laughs> but doesn't spaghetti sound good right now? First question. Who arrested Jesus and brought him to Pontius Pilate? Uh. Yu-Yu. The Pharisees, who were the temple leaders who felt threatened by Jesus' teachings. That is correct. One point to the green team. What just happened? She was so fast. She's really good. You're really good! Next question. How did Jesus respond to Pilate's question, are you the king of the Jews? Wait, wait, what's the answer? What? I don't okay, know. so Jesus is called king of kings, so he's king of any place. Uh, yes, you, you. Jesus responded with a question. Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Correct. That was a tricky one, and we're tied at 26. <laughs> Too slow, Leo! Next question. Who exactly was Pontius Pilate? A jerk! No, Ruby, we- Is that your final answer? Yes! Final answer! Incorrect! Green team? Pontius Pilate was the Roman governor of Judea. Correct! Green team takes the lead. <sighs> Isn't that basically what I said? And now, the final question. Worth two points. Whoever gets this right wins it all. And the question is, where did Jesus tell Pontius Pilate his kingdom was? No, Mimi, wait! Hi, I'm Mimi from the red team. I, I just want to say that I think the green team is doing such a great job today. Mimi, what are you doing? Mimi, you're going to lose it for us! Mimi, do you have an answer for where did Jesus tell Pontius Pilate his kingdom was? Yes. Jesus' kingdom is not from here. No! Judges, can we accept that? That is correct! Red Team wins! Jesus' kingdom is not from here? What kind of an answer is that? The kind of answer Jesus gave Pilate in John chapter 18, verse 36. Jesus said, my kingdom is not from this world. Wait, you memorized that whole verse? <laughs> no, sometimes things like that just fall out of my brain. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I earned myself some spaghetti. Hey, you, you! You want to get some spaghetti? Ha! Perfect! 
All right, Gabe, what are you doing? I'm seeing how fast I can assemble an oil candle blindfolded. Uh-huh. And why? Oh, because I'm trying to join the Altar Guild. What is the Altar Guild? Oh, you know, the secret organization that's responsible for all our church's seasonal decorations, communion cups, wafers, oil candles. They're super mysterious and very cool. They sound like weirdos. They are not weirdos. Only the most precise and faithful may join their ranks. I have to pass a series of tests to determine if I have the three P's required for the job. Punctual, proficient, and persnickety. And you're doing this when? Right. Now! You who are faithful, enter the sacristy slash fellowship hall of the altar guild! <laughs> you stand in the presence of the altar guild! Are you prepared to be tested, Gabriel? Ah, uh, I think so. Well, that's wonderful. We're all super excited to have you here. Victor, you're in the Altar Guild? I've been coming with my great Aunt Marjorie since I was little. She's been a member for years. Why the megaphone? Uh, the uh, head sacristan is out sick, so I'm standing in for her. Now, ahem. Are you ready? I think so. Answer me these questions three. Do you possess the proficiency of an eagle? Uh, yes. That's a great answer. You're doing, you're doing a great job. Do you want a cup of water or something? No? You're okay? Okay, good. <clears throat> Do you possess the punctuality of a mongoose? Maybe? Oh, I think this might have been a mistake. Final question. Do you... Possess a car the Ultra Guild could use to run errands on Saturday mornings! I... I... I can't! <laughs> Aw. And he was doing so well. <sighs> I was kidding myself, thinking that a cool secret organization would want me. Hey, Gabe. There you are. Save it, Victor. I know I didn't get into the Altar Guild. I'm nothing like an eagle or a mongoose. That's not true. We couldn't let you in because you left partway through the ceremony. Our bylaws are pretty strict on that. But we really encourage you to try again next year. Really? Yeah. We all think you'd be great in the Altar Guild. You've got just the kind of passion we're looking for. So don't give up. And don't worry about not having a car. They ask everyone that. It wasn't part of the test? No. I think they just really need someone to run errands on Saturday mornings. Hey, Ruby, what you got there? It's my new newsletter. Here, have one. The Bi-Weekly Prophet, telling hard truths no matter how truthful. Ooh, catchy title. Wait. Is this about people in our congregation? Ms. Miller's new winter coat makes her look like a parakeet. Pastor Pete is so bad with computers, he should be called Pastor Delete. Brandon and Eve singing in the choir is so off-pitch, they should stop singing. I couldn't think of anything clever for that last one, but it is all true. I started the bi-weekly prophet to deliver the message of truth, and that's just what I'll do. These are all so mean. Ruby can't hand these out. Of course, if someone told Ruby that, she might get mad and then say mean things about that person in her mean newsletter. Oh, yeah, that could get ugly. Rock, paper, scissors to decide who talks to her about it? Okay. Hooray, I win! Good luck talking to Ruby! I believe in you! Wait, how do we know you won? Bi-weekly profit! Get your bi-weekly profit! Find out whose shoes are terrible and who chews way too loudly. Uh, hey, Ruby. I was wondering if I could talk to you about your newsletter. What about it? Well, <laughs> it's, let me think, it's the 
title. Funny story. It's called bi-weekly because I only have time to work on it once every two weeks. I I actually (laughs) meant profit. Good choice because prophets are messengers of God. So good title. I'll just be going. It's so mean. So very, very mean. But I can't look away. Bi-weekly profit! Get your bi-weekly profit! Bi-weekly profit! You know another thing about prophets, Ruby? They deliver messages of truth. God's truth. Yep, they always tell it like it is. Even if the person they have to tell the truth to is powerful or might get angry or (laughs) has a newsletter. You know, prophets got chased off into the wilderness for delivering messages like that. Wouldn't it be terrible if, for example, you had to live in the woods behind the church, Gabe? I have done that before, and I did not enjoy it. But still, a true prophet would always deliver the message. So here goes. Ruby, your newsletter is mean. It's really going to hurt people. It won't help anyone. And I don't think you're using the term bi-weekly correctly. You really think that, Gabe? It's the truth. So yell or do whatever you have to, but I said it. Maybe you're right. I'll stop the newsletter. But you are wrong about one thing. I am? Yes. Bi-weekly can either mean every two weeks or twice a week. Both uses are correct. I looked it up before I made the newsletter, Gabe, obviously. Phew. Happy Advent, Mimi. Happy Advent to you too, Bert. Thanks, Mimi. I was pretty down last year around this time, so this year I'm determined to stay positive. Positivity is my motto. Or maybe it's just a word that I like. Either way, see you inside. Mimi's got the right idea. I'm gonna look on the bright side. No! Uh, What? It's a miracle. (sighs) It's all right, Bert. Don't fly off the deep end. Stay positive. It's a beautiful day, after all. (sighs) Leo? Leo? Leo is not here, Bert. Oh, hi, Theologitomaton. So, where is Leo? He is not within my sensor's range. Huh. What's your sensor's range? One hundred miles. A hundred miles? But he promised he'd hang out with me before Sunday school. It seems unlikely that he will be able to fulfill his promise. He stood me up. I can't believe he stood me up. Dear Leo, standing all by myself in your lab, angry face, I just love finding out from your computer that you totally stood me up. Sarcastic face, you're a great friend. Slant mouth, send. Ugh, this is just great. My only friend at church totally bailed on me. Sorry, Bert, my grandma is in the hospital and I had to go out of town? Leo's grandma is in the hospital? That's awful! Ugh, now I feel like a total jerk. Affirmative. Hey, Bert! (sighs) What is it, Ruby? You gonna make fun of me? If you'd stop being weird and let me talk, you'd see that I was going to remind you that we're having the Advent Family Feast today in the Fellowship Hall. That's today? Mm Mm-hmm. It's starting in a couple of minutes. You should join us. Well, really? Are you sure? Uh, yeah. I just invited you, didn't I? Okay. Uh, did that just happen? Yes. But you know what? (laughs) It's all right. I mean, what are you going to do, right? I, I guess. Come on, let's find you a towel. Is this 
this gonna take long? Come on, Ruby, be respectful. It's not every day that members of our congregation get baptized. <laughs> so that's a yes. <sighs> and here comes Fiona. Oh. And there goes Fiona. Are you all right? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm good. Wow, that was super embarrassing. It's fine. I'm sure no one noticed one, two little stumbles. I don't know, Gabe. Baptisms are a big deal. They have gotta go perfectly. At... Do you? What is she tripping on? Her feet? There's nothing on the ground. All right. She made it up to Pastor Pete and the baptismal font. She seems fine now that she's standing still. Oh, wait. What is she doing now? Oh no, tell me she isn't going to... Oh. She dove! I can't believe she dove into the baptismal font! It's as though no one read Pastor Donna's no diving sign. So, is the baptism canceled now? If it goes this badly, they have to cancel it, right? Pastor Pete's still going, man. That guy is a professional. Uh, oh. Now she's lost her glasses, and she's using Pastor Pete's robe to dry off. Great, she's got her glasses back. Eep. Oh no, not the baptismal font. Oh. Well, looks like things are finally under control. And Pastor Pete is wrapping things up. Oh, thank goodness. Let's go dry off and never speak of this again. Hey, Ruby, hi, did you see my baptism? There is no way we could miss it. It's all right, Fiona. I'm sure that Pastor Pete will let you have a do-over. A do-over? For what? Your baptism? So it actually works this time? Yeah, Fiona, you might have scared off the Holy Spirit when the font spilled water everywhere, and the Holy Spirit is supposed to be with you at your baptism. Pastor Pete said that you can't scare off the Holy Spirit. Whenever you get baptized, the Holy Spirit is there, and I got baptized. Yes, but how do you know you got baptized? Was there water? Yes, everywhere. Was there God's word? Yes, everywhere. Then I was baptized, and it was wonderful. Mission accomplished. Wow. I guess even with a few things going wrong, Fiona's baptism still counts. Yeah. I just hope that... There she goes again! Fiona, are you all right? I'm great! You two have a super day! Ooh. All right, everyone. We have exactly 10 minutes until 100 wedding guests are going to burst through those doors. Let's just do a quick roll call. Bert, the appetizers, are they ready? They'll be out of the oven in one minute. Great. Leo, the sound system is good to go? Operating at 100% efficiency, Roxy. And the special playlist? It's all right here on my phone. And the ice sculptures, Chet? They just arrived. I'm about to unload them from my cousin's pickup truck. Great. Mimi, are the flowers prepared? Are they ever? Great. Where are they? The ground. It's cruel to cut flowers from their stems. I consider it an act of violence. Okay, but where in the ground? At the public greenhouse, only nine blocks away. Okay, that's all right. We can deal with the small hiccup since everything else is going so smoothly. <gasps> Chet, these are not the approved designs. They were, last night, but the January thaw hit. Oh no, oh no, oh no! What? What is it? The speaker's blue, and the memory on my phone was wiped! We don't have music? What are we going to do? <laughs> I'm sorry, Roxy, I failed you! <laughs> no, no, get away from that! Ugh. We got a problem, Roxy. What happened? The raccoons, they were everywhere! We are not prepared for this wedding reception. Hey, all the guests arrived. Oh, Pastor Pete, I failed you. 
I wish Jesus was here. He could turn this around with a miracle. Oh, no. I forgot to invite Jesus. Actually, the guests seem to be having a good time. Yeah, they don't seem to notice the water damage or complete lack of food or music. Oh, Mr. Sinescu brought his accordion. People are dancing. And this song wasn't even on the requested playlist. Pastor Pete's wife is quite the dancer. It looks like some of the guests brought food. They must have thought it was a potluck, as always. People seem to really be enjoying themselves. Hey, Roxy, you didn't fail anyone. Come and see. See, Roxy? No one cares a few things went wrong. There might not be fancy food, but there's a lot of love. Looks like Jesus was here after all. The newlyweds do look really happy. Mr. Stanescu really knows how to rock a party. Hey, Leo. Want to dance? <gasps> <sighs> Thank you.